Hello and welcome everyone to our 21st session of Hello Casa. My name is Michael and today I'll be talking to Paulo Lopez from the Algarve, Portugal. Hello. Paulo, hello, Paulo. Paulo is a real estate broker in the Algarve in Portugal, speaks German, French and English and Portuguese, obviously, um, has a vast experience in real estate, is a lecturer at the European Real Estate Academy in Germany. I hope I got that right. And I'm yes. super glad to have you here today. Um, Paulo, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience today? Thank you very much, Mike, for the opportunity to tell your people a little bit about my country and the place where I live and uh, the real estate industry in Portugal. I will do my best to uh, make it easy, not complicated, so that everybody understands what this country can offer to you if you want to come one day and buy a property here. Absolutely, great. Um, first of all, where where is Algarve for the ones who don't know? Where is Algarve located? You hear a lot of about Algarve in the press, and also Portugal is a nice destination. Always Algarve is is uh, displayed as the perfect uh, spot to to retire and also to buy properties. Tell us a little bit about your region. Well, the Algarve is um, the neighbor of Morocco, so we are the south place of Portugal. Uh, we are uh, on the Atlantic, so the water is not the like the same temperature like in the Mediterranean. Um, but we have all the year very good weather. I think it's one of the best places to live. I always say to my kids, if uh, a paradise uh, looks like something, then the Algarve is very close to it. And the people who live here tell the same. The people are very friendly and uh, it's the south of Portugal. So as I said, in front of Morocco and uh, on the Atlantic. So um, there are a lot of foreigners living in, in the Algarve. Uh, can you give us a little bit uh, maybe of a split directly of uh, the people living, uh, the countries who are rep represented in the Algarve, living there um, and also enjoying life? Well, um, it starts in the early 70s. Uh, the four or five uh, come the first uh, English uh, people over to, to Portugal. We have um, a very long history with the uh, with the uh, Great Britain, uh, the United Kingdom, as we are um, alliate alliate to them um, since uh, the early times of of uh, the the shipping uh, and explorer times, uh, together against the Spanish and the French. Uh, so the Algarve is for the for the British. Uh, visitors like Mallorca for the Germans, if it is comparable. And uh, we are a place uh, in which the nature is uh, still well conserved. So uh, we haven't built like in Spain in the early 80s, 90s. Uh, we have a green coastline still. We have on the west side of the Algarve a nature park, uh, which has its origin uh, still like it is. Um, so you have long beaches uh, where you can uh, go and and uh, stay. Uh, and the west side of the Algarve, as I said, is uh, a, a protected area where you cannot build uh, as like in the places where, where I am. Um, so the Algarve has maintained his characteristic and the people as well. Yeah, that's true. I recently went to, to Portugal and um, there are a lot of... Um, the, the coastline from Lisbon down to Faro is uh, very well conserved and is uh, mainly a natural um, um, a natural park or at least like there are no construction sites directly on the uh, on, on on the coast, which is amazing. It is well. The thing has to do with the Portuguese uh, bureaucracy in the the 1890s. We have some projects who are started to be built now, which need uh, licensed and uh, now with the new law of uh, the European Community which is right um, the 2020 protection law uh, of the coastline uh, you cannot build anymore um, like you built in the years before so you need a minimum of 500 meters from the coastline to build something touristic and mm -hmm. one kilometer for new residential uh, areas or urban areas 
and uh, there's um, as well a program at the moment in Portugal which supports the renovation of houses inside the urban areas, uh, which is well used as well by foreigners. Coming to the point of your first question, sorry, I, I have gone a little away from that. Um, the main clients, which or the main people uh, from from other countries who live here, um, are the British in the first line, and then the second line we can say the the Germans, Dutch, and now French. Uh, the French people um, have bought a lot in the last uh, five six years, um, so we have a. a a healthy mix of people, so it's not only concentrated on one nationality uh, that you afterwards uh, see everybody talking one language um, where you go to. No, it's um, it's very um, diversified, and uh, the Portuguese in himself is um, is genetical. I think um, by genetic somebody who wants to be uh, friendly to the people and learn very quick languages. So if you come here as a French, you will have immediately in the supermarket somebody who speaks in your language, in the restaurant uh, and everywhere, like the English as well, and like the Germans. So it's a very mix of cultures which live here. And the main uh, aspect of living here is, at first, the good weather, the very good food, we don't need a biological stamp on the on the food. It comes not more far away than 30 kilometers around us. Um, so it's a very healthy place to live in, I'd say. Okay, great. That means um, obviously everyone also has to assimilate to the local language. Uh, and uh, as you say, there's like not that much of an exclusion of like um, concentration of, of one of one uh, ethnicity and, and nationality which uh, remains in its own and does not really mingle with the others that's that's yeah. I think that's very important in order to to um, to enrich um, a society and also um, yeah make it make it uh, as as diverse as possible I used to to make an example when I when I'm uh, do my lecture work in the academy to the people who don't know Portugal and the Portuguese people that I say, and this is true because uh, a lot of foreigners um, can uh, testimony it. Uh, if you meet uh, a Portuguese um, in a restaurant, or if you if you go to a restaurant, or you have a, a problem with your car on middle in the middle of the highway, Portuguese will come to you and will ask you if you need a help, and if he doesn't know your language, he will call a friend who knows who can talk with you in your language. So this is the, like, I think with this I explain what is the Portuguese nature. And on the side, we are the fifth most secure place on earth. So not said by us, but by OECD and uh, the international studies. That comes to you're stretching on, on one uh, very uh, interesting thing on the, let's say, reputation and also the ranking on international terms uh, on Portugal concerning uh, destinations for retirement. I think last week there was a new study released uh, again ranking Portugal on top as per um, top destinations for, for expats. Um, yes. Can you, can you elaborate uh, or give us your point of view on that? Um, not only you just mentioned the security, are there more things which which uh, might trigger this ranking, let's say health, uh, access to healthcare, affordability, um, social security, maybe even in infrastructure, education system. Give us an, yes. a, an overview of, of these points. Yes, um, there are so much points that I don't think that this interview is, uh, is long enough to tell all of them. Um, but I will take some specifically um, which most of the people worldwide didn't know or don't know. Um, after Dubai and Letland, uh, Portugal is the place with the best infrastructure for internet. We have 4G at the beach uh, with a simple small hotspot box or with your mobile phone. Um, we were the, one of the last countries in Europe which had the, the internet connection and uh, we made immediately uh, fiber optic. That's the reason why we have that that facility. When I'm in Germany or sometimes in other countries like France or, or in England, and I'm not in the main cities, I have to go with my mobile phone in the in the, the countryside looking if I have one pin 
for my for my phone call. This is not here. The here you can be in the train from from Faro to Lisbon, and you can work on your computer online the whole time without without one one quit. This is one of the points. The second point is um, that you really can live here without knowing Portuguese. Because you go to a public uh, place, or you go to the municipalities, or to um, health uh, uh, like that, and you go in English, and you can easily, easily make all the things that you need to do in German, often as well, and as well in French language. This depends then from the places. In Lisbon, it's not so much, and in Porto, less. But in the Algarve, it's simple. Uh, it's not a problem because the people are prepared and the, the service uh, providers are prepared for that. The third point is um, the food. This is, I think, a very elementary uh, um, thing because it's really, like I said in the starting of this uh, interview, um, if I want to eat pork, the pork comes from Monchik, it's uh, 10 kilometers away. If I want to, uh, to eat a chicken, I go more 20 kilometers and I have as well chicken from there. If I want the fish, I only need to go to the fisherman on the side or to the market, to the fresh market and pick it up. And if I want to uh, eat vegetables, they are planted in the gardens of the communities here around, in of the land uh, agriculture places here in Silvage, which is only five kilometers from, from where we are now making this, uh, this interview. So everything is here. Then comes the climate. The climate is healthy. Um, it is uh, a clean air. We have no industry in Portugal. Uh, we haven't had any big uh, industry with uh, with uh, pollution, uh, either in the north a little bit, but it's not significant. Then uh, we have invested a lot in um, renewable, renewable energy. We are the country in Europe which in peaks, like in March, this year we cut 93% uh, of our needs only produced by renewable energy through um, water um, water um, generators mm -hmm. um, like lakes, uh, artificial lakes, uh, wind and sun. And we still do not use the whole capacity which we have in, in the sun area. So I think more five, six years we are exporting energy, we don't need to buy energy anymore. Um, all these things are not known worldwide or not known by a lot of people, but the investors had a look on us, especially the Americans uh, when the crisis comes, and now they are still investing. I don't know if you know that um, we are closer, Lisbon is closer to Toronto than Miami, so the winter birds from Canada are starting looking at us, um, with a different eye because it's cheaper to buy here and you do not have hurricanes here, okay? Um, so all this complex of situations and then the people in it. Nearly every third Portuguese young person or people um, have a university degree because the Portuguese parents, they invest in their kids, they want them to study. So we have a, a high um, educated society which is not known as well outside from, from Portugal. And therefore, a lot of companies are coming now to Portugal to invest in Portugal, especially in the IT, uh, technology, startup companies, etc. We have big programs from 1.4 billion, investing only in young people for startup companies in the IT uh, area. Uh, Mercedes or Daimler, BMW, uh, Volkswagen have their uh, automotive center for the new uh, autonomous cars uh, in Lisbon, all the, the heads of that. Uh, Cisco has um, around about 1,200 engineers in Portugal, only working for their network worldwide. SAP is one of the biggest uh, employers after Bosch and uh, Volkswagen here. So um, a lot of a lot of things are happening in the uh, and we have a good um, ground for investment at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you just mentioned so many things which are all 
Super interesting. Uh, let me uh, comment on a, on a few ones. The first one concerning the internet. I think lately the, uh, the the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Germany he was super embarrassed because, uh, or he I think other uh, foreign ministers they were laughing at him because they said, hey, actually you guys in in Germany your internet sucks. Like it's really really bad. And uh, you know right now we all know that there's a, 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 um, a strong conversation going on on digitalization in Germany and stuff, and uh, everyone is saying, "Okay, you're lagging behind," and no one wants to believe it. The second one is uh, it's super interesting that you say, "Okay, uh, renewable in energies." It's it's something which I also know from a former interview with Costa Rica. Uh, you go on hydro. You can even obviously I think the potential for wind is is amazing. However, wind is kind of, in my opinion kind of contradictory con concerning migrat migratory birds and you always have to see like how many how many important animals you might be killing um, so I don't know how much you are you're, you're leveraging there um, then the next one concerning the education um, I think this is the foundation for a strong society um, I mean if you have like a high education or a society with high education, you are building up the foundation for the next 25 or 30 years. And the way I see it right now is Portugal is, and this comes to my next question concerning what for, what for parts has the government taken during the last uh, period in order to position it like now for the future? Because in my opinion, there's few elements to make a country like success successful is definitely very strong investment on education, uh, then lowering corporate tax, uh, strong strong focus on security, little corruption, and then in fact you are, and then also progressive tax rate on social on 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 the on the on the um, employee on on the employee side, and then you have in fact like entrepreneurs who want to start a business, especially the ones who are highly educated. You have like investment pouring in from from different countries, and then you have in fact the the uh, the economic engine moving um how about what before we go to the polit political part how about uh, the i guess the educational system obviously is free um and also university wise but i also assume because i also used to study in portugal you have like the public ones and and the private ones correct yes yes you have basic costs but uh, imagine um i think for a semester uh, in a public uh, university uh, which is one of the 50 best in the world uh, in Lisbon, uh, Lisbon Tech. Uh, I think you pay uh, something like uh, 600 euros for uh, six months, okay, which is nothing uh, compared to other, other places. Um, so uh, the foreigners have uh, find out these this, uh, conditions and uh, we have a lot of students from Poland at the moment. Mm -hmm. Because the, the climate is much better here, the food is better here, and you can drink outside the bars. Because uh, in most of the countries in Europe, this is really true, it's one of the reasons why you have so much foreign students, because they can sit at, at the evening outside and drink, because in their countries they're not allowed anymore to drink outside. And uh, well, with alcohol, we, we don't have that. that uh, society problem like in other countries because we are peaceful people we, we do not like to fight uh, we like to discuss okay but we, we we let the fight for the others so and then this this climb of of, of staying and being uh, helps a lot that a lot of young people come over and that is the reason why as well in the moment and talking a little bit about real estate not only on the part and later we talk more about that but it's one of the reasons why we have now a really wake of investment in uh, student residences in Lisbon. Uh, myself, I'm involved in some of this of these deals, um, and uh, it's starting as well the new university in Kashkaj. Imagine you go out of your university and you go directly passing the road to the other side into a beach with uh, a lighted, uh, uh, yeah, illuminated yeah. for dark at night. Where yeah. do you? Have in Europe. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is you're referring to the Nova, to the new, uh, to the new uh, SBA building. Yeah, I was in, invited to the inauguration because I'm an alumni there, and unfortunately I didn't go. But I, I was also like, when I was studying there, I was like, it would be nice to study here like five years later, and then I would be, uh, I would be visiting the, <laughs> this faculty directly on the be uh, on the beach. I, I, I totally get your point, and I think like whenever I go to Portugal, it's like. Okay, this is this is uh, this is a destination where where definitely I can imagine to live. Um, 
should be at well as well at the same university and uh, surfing at night <laughs> <laughs> okay i see i'm not the only one um, <laughs> Concerning concerning the uh, you touched on a very interesting point uh, concerning real estate and the uh, student residence uh, re residences and also uh, apartments. You also also linking that to the former comment you said before concerning the um, restoration of uh, certain parts of certain urban parts. Where I'm thinking about Alfama and other other very uh, very uh, um, let's say historical uh, buildings over there. Um, tell us a little bit about the movement there and the trend and, and the situation. Uh, well, it's a, a sword with two sides, mm -hmm. uh, if we can say. Um, well, we had the, starting with the Christ, I have to explain a little bit about uh, the reason why we had the Christ. The Christ was not uh, made by us. The Christ was made by, by Lehman Brothers and others in, in the US. But we were a country which was spending always more money than that what we earned in our taxes. And uh, it hasn't changed a lot, I must say. The politics hasn't uh, changed or hasn't uh, uh, used this phase of time uh, to recover uh, the, the economy. But the entrepreneurs and the young people and the young entrepreneurs uh, and business people in Portugal and foreigners who have invested in Portugal, they use that time to, to grow uh, uh, up in, in Portugal with their companies as well with their investment. Now coming to, to the real estate, Porto and Lisbon were the both uh, cities which had the most changes in the last years. 2012, we were um, selling properties 30% under the price, which is the cost need. That may, means you buy a, a land, you build a property, and you sell it 30% less than the costs you have. Okay? Then it comes back to 2014 to the prices which we had in 2014. And since 2014, the prices grow up around about 30%. Okay? So when the, sometimes the journalists talk about six uh, price growing, it was is not right because 2014 we were on the zero point and now we have 30% on top. Okay, we are still uh, in a good investment price. Um, I know the prices in Munich and in London and in Paris, and I can tell you Lisbon is not a half of that cost if you invest there. But for the Portuguese, and that's the other side of the sword, not affordable anymore. Mm -hmm. But Therefore, you have to understand that in Portugal, uh, nearly 80% are property owners of the population, yeah, of the working population and the, the pensioners, 80% are owners of a property. This has culture, Portuguese culture, because it was usual that the father, when the kids marry, uh, they give them a land or they give them an apartment so that they can start with their um, yeah, with their nest, okay? Mm -hmm. So, and this maintains during the last years, and that is a problem for the Portuguese economy, because if you buy a property, you can, you are not flexible anymore to, to run behind the job, you see? Because you are running behind the money from the, the nest in which you are. So you cannot circulate like in other countries. Even an example, in Germany, 70 has not an own property, around about 30%, I think, now, with the new programs. Uh, and here is absolutely the opposite. So now the Portuguese society has to learn that it's not more affordable and possible that young people with 24 years, when they start marrying, um, that they buy a property. And that is creating a certain so social um, irritation. Irritation, yeah? yeah, but it will change. The people will understand that in the, in the next years that it's not possible to live in the best road of Lisbon for a price like having uh, an apartment uh, outside of Lisbon in the, in the countryside. It's not the same. They have to be teached and learn that. I'm sorry to say that, and uh, I think uh, they will. I will have a big shit storm from Portuguese. They heard hear this, um, but um, this is the market. And uh, we, when we have 
before. Um, we have um, cities with uh, ruins uh, which have not been rebuilt because there was no money and no capital from the government or from any province to renovate these buildings. And now the foreigners come, they like the cities, they like Lisbon, they like Porto. Sometimes I, I think I'm in, I'm in France when I go to Lisbon to the, both, to, to the down, uh, downtown because it's only French around. Okay? Or I go to Porto and I hear all the Americans because the Americans like the, the Douro River and the, the wineries, etc. They come over to Porto because of the cheap flights. Mm -hmm. and this is another thing. Um, the the cheap flights from these airlines has brought a lot to Portugal as well, Airbnb and booking, and that translates himself again in real estate market, which is. Um, therefore, that foreigners invest in, in real estate in Portugal, especially in the cities, in places where I would not invest because it will cost me a hell in the middle of Porto, in, in Lisbon, in Portugal, you know, the small roads that we have. Um, to bring there some construction material, you have to do it all by hand. You cannot put it by machines because the roads are so narrow that you cannot go there, but the foreigners buy it. Uh, they invest in, in, in handcraft because it is still cheaper than in their countries, okay? Um, and they rebuild it and uh, they make it looking nice and then the tourists come and stay there for a weekend, for a, for a week and, and love to be in Porto because it's so romantic. It's interesting because in fact, you know, we always see these, um, let's say, negative the negative impact on Airbnb and uh, the uh, uh, changing uh, in landscape of, of obviously the, the global cities. And to be honest, I don't have an uh, opinion about it because yes, on the one hand, it's super important to, to give like the residents a normal, like a uh, possibility to live normally. Um, and I think there has to be a certain regulation. Um, and then on the other hand, you say, yes, so the investors, they are not like, Let's say they're not only investing buying buying real estate and then they leave and they just you know hold hold it because I don't know they maybe have to uh, are seeking any money money laundering uh, activity and stuff. It's also that they bring new investments as per related businesses. Okay, the carpenter might get a job. The um, the uh, the person who 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 um, who is uh, the normal plumber, whatever it is. So it's, it would be interesting to quantify also the economic impact, like in throughout the entire throughout the entire value chain. Um, yeah. What's your what's your opinion? And are there any um, legislations on the on the way right now concerning a restriction on Airbnb tax impose uh, new taxes which are being imposed? Because I think a lot of people are making it very easy to say, okay, you know, I'm I'm gonna buy an apartment, I'm going to rent it out by Airbnb, this is my ROI on an annual basis. However, they are not uh, accounting for potential changes in the legal landscape. Well, um, if we talk about politics, um, eventually I'm not the right person to talk about it because I don't like the government that we have at the moment. Um, I think um, we have to be more self-responsible uh, for the for the things that we do and for our life and we have to let uh, some place for the next generations which means uh, we have we cannot make only debt for them we have to let them some money back and some investment and this is sometimes not happening in this country because um, we have a socialist uh, government who, with the supporting of uh, the communist party and uh, the left hand uh, party so um, we are orientated to um, support uh, more the, the social side of the community. We, I'm not against that, but it must be money for that. Uh, so I cannot tell you exactly what will happen in the next time because we have elections this year. Um, but I think that we will continue on this path. We have um, a finance minister, uh, which is an independent uh, politic. Um, he is as well the minister of or the, the chief of the Eurogroup, um, uh, the financial chief of the Eurogroup, 
which is important. So they, if the Eurogroup gives the Portuguese finance minister this, uh, this position is because they know his capacity. And he has struggled a lot, the ministers and the, and the prime minister, to, uh, to spend that money out which they wanted to, to spend out uh, so that they have more votes on the, on the election. This is my personal opinion. Again, uh, I'm waiting for the next shit storm because of this. <laughs> I would say, but um, I think uh, Portugal will continue on the path uh, of uh, restructuring himself. Um, the um, international um, evaluation uh, by Fitch, by Moody's, and others have uh, ranked up to B plus, which is very good um, to compare. Uh, Germany has A, um, so we are not so close, but we are close. Okay, and um, so that uh, helps us in our debt that we have a lower um, lower fee to pay for our credits um, to to Europe, uh, which is another story. But this I will not tell today. We talk then in private about this. Um, so the Portugal is on on a good way. We have invested a lot in technology. As I said in the starting, we have a big program of one point four billion in the technology area. I think Portugal will uh, change to to be one of the hubs of tech in Europe, if not one of the strongest, uh, because of the language. Everybody speaks English. English, okay. Uh, because of the Brexit as well. Uh, because uh, the the next strong uh, uh, IT industry is around London. People forget that often. Okay? They not the car industry anymore, like they had before, or other industries. But they have a very strong tech industry. Uh, and if you, if Europe loses uh, Britain, uh, that will as well uh, touch a lot of companies in Europe. Um, so a lot of um, National high tech companies are investing here. Google has uh, grown up to the double size uh, in three years in, in Portugal. Um, we are uh, trying to as well to, to get Amazon, uh, but not in the service, but in the IT uh, area to, to Portugal. Uh, well, in SAP, Cisco, as I said, so the ground is here. Okay, the, the, the base is here. Okay, and the, the only thing that that we need is, is to grow up in this area. We continue to grow up in this area. Uh, I see a very positive future for Portugal. One thing we should not forget, um, tourism is very good, is absolutely needed for Portugal, but tourists come only to a country because of the people and the culture. But if you have a wake, like we have a moment of so much people coming over to Portugal, that will take us a little bit of our culture and of our identity away. Because we talk only in French, we talk only in German, we talk only in English. Uh, we serve um, everyday tourists. Boats, four or five uh, cruise, uh, cruise ships come to Lisbon in one day sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, fill up the roads with, uh, with this, um, well, what's the name of this uh, electric? Um, uh, the uh, Segway. Segways, uh, which come from the boat, uh, mm -hmm. with the bicycles, which come from the boat, mm -hmm. uh, and then they go back and eat on the boat. So this doesn't bring us anything. Okay, but it brings us a big impact of people on one place, which is not good for the health, not good for the people, not good for the identity. So I think there Portugal has to be a little bit careful in the future, um, choosing a little bit better what is the offer in tourism, which we will give to the to 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 all the people around, not closing. I'm not saying closing the country. This is not what I want to to say. Only I want to say is specifically don't go to the mass tour, tourism. Okay, because there are so much countries who offer that, and uh, we need to preserve our nature, and we need to preserve our nature, the people's nature, how they are, so that we still be attractive. But in um, in uh, the, uh, there was an article uh, some weeks ago, which I write as well on LinkedIn, about the sustainability of Portugal. And Portugal is one of the, the countries with the best sustainability in tourism um, and as well in all the other environments. So I think we, we are on a good way. 
Yeah, it's um, all you say is super interesting considering the com uh, the companies uh, settling in and, and also increasing in, in Portugal. I think one big uh, sign for that is also that the Web Summit, the huge marketing uh, summit, uh, moved from the Dublin to Lisbon. Um, yes. So this is, I think, when I when I saw that, it's also like Lisbon is, is also right now achieving itself to position itself like as a tech hub, as a marketing hub, as as a as a as a hub for the new for the new generation for for the generation Y, in order to to seek new new uh, new employment, and also concerning the uh, I, I'm totally with you concerning concerning the um, these cruise ships. Um, I think you have to impose like a massive amount of taxes because they don't bring anything to the to the uh, to, to the people in the in yeah. the city. Um, I I know that bef bef unfortunately before I left Colombia um, or when I left Colombia there were like like little little amount of of cruise ships uh, coming to Cartagena. But I I also heard that like now a lot of people go to Cartagena and then they are there for two days or two two hours. Uh, they stroll around and they go again, and then they leave with a certain picture in mind. And in fact, like haven't even had the possibility to really get to know the society, the people, the country, and just have like a very, very small, small picture in, in their head. And I think it doesn't bring anyone anything. And I also think that everyone has to have like a certain has to, has to have a certain boundary and a certain effort to be taken in order to visit a country. And yeah. It's giving it someone to to a silver on a silver plate and just saying okay this is where you go this is this is what you can see and stuff and then you can what well, then you can go go back again well no and this is I think like those customers are mainly uh, considered or uh, potential customers for v, VR glasses and then you put it on your head and then it's the same it's the same experience for them but that's yeah. that's my personal opinion um, oh, you are absolutely right because um, the effect of destroying uh, things is so big yeah. because they the ships they are the biggest pollution yeah. uh, on earth okay yeah. um 75 i think i read 750 boats of that worldwide has so much impact like all the cars on this yeah imagine 750 no i i totally agree and i'm totally against it i would never i i i i, I totally against I also uh, heard that they're even releasing all their all their garbage in front of the harbors and stuff. They don't have any, you know, any social responsibility or environmental responsibility on any, anything. So I think that there has to be like, and I think it's way too cheap, like those cruises. I, yes. I uh, sometimes I see some offers where I'm like, okay, how can you afford that when it's when it's just you know so so cheap? And because if you go anywhere, where you are only two hours, you don't come back. You let your waste there automatically. Exactly. Because you don't care, it's normal. But we need to come back to the real state. I think. Yeah, absolutely. So from my... exactly. We have, even, <laughs> we have, to be honest, we haven't even touched upon your your business. I mean, it's been so interesting. We haven't even talked about what actually are you doing. Tell us a little about about your business. What are you dedicating yourself? Normally, it's like the first question I ask. But you <laughs> you jumped into the super interesting facts and 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 topics right now. So I didn't even I even didn't even bother to to go like with my Let's say script in my head. So please, no problem. No problem. What what are you offering? What are your what are your services? What are what is your, actually your business? <laughs> but look, I think I think it's more interesting for the public uh, the conversation that we have talking too much about real estate. Uh, what I say and I will try to make it short so that it's not um, um, too boring. Um, well, uh, I work in, in the real estate industry. Um, we have uh, three offices in, in the Algarve. We have uh, as well office in Lisbon and now starting as well with a new team in, in Porto in, in short time. Uh, so we cover whole Portugal and we will eventually this year open another office in Madeira. So what we do is we sell properties, uh, especially in the south. This is our core business, uh, selling uh, uh, holiday properties. Um, so apartments as well houses, you can uh, have a look on our website, uh, www.kazeberia.com. We have it done later with Halo Casa, I think, on the profile. And uh, what we have done, what others haven't done before, uh, we created a bibliotheque online with videos in a lot of languages uh, so that people can know what is Portugal, what is the Algarve, what are the Portuguese people, testimonials, some 
things about real estate in Portugal. So that's what you are doing. We have um, a collection, which is eventually as well interesting for your people on the Hazeberia.tv site. I don't know if you have had a look on that, Michael, only as a, as a yes, tip. Yes, I've had. It's super interesting because I also have to say that once in a while lately, I, I talked to one person here in Zurich and he said like, I've been trying to, to buy property uh, a lot in, in Portugal and it's, it's a challenge. It's a challenge because you don't really like where to start. It is. Well, where to start? Uh, at first, I have to say, um, try, try to find a company, a real estate company. Um, the Portuguese market is regulated. You have to have a license to, to open up and to work as a real estate. And go to real estate, which is speaking the, the local language, not only French, not only English, and doesn't understand anything about the Portuguese law. Okay? Because a good real estate agent has to go with you hand by hand from the first day on till the last. And after that, if you need a hairdresser or if you need a doctor or if you need somebody else, he should be on your side mm -hmm. because you are new in this country. And this is something that often uh, colleagues or other brokers do not do. We have that as philosophy, philosophy in our company. But as I said, we sell agents. We are not the lawyers. Mm -hmm. The system in Portugal uh, is a little bit different to the system in Germany. Here in Portugal, the buyer never pays the commission. It's only the seller, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, if the buyer pays, it's because he wants a personal service and he asks for it. Okay, but the real estate broker never will ask for it. Okay, if he asks for it, it's a foreigner or it's a bandit. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> to to be clear in in, in that. Second, um, when you buy a property, never miss a lawyer on your side. Uh, if you can find a lawyer which talks your language, but not. Uh, a natural uh, English, German, mm -hmm. otherwise, because again, he doesn't understand anything about the law. Mm -hmm. There are some, we have two, three German uh, lawyers here. They really are good and they understand uh, the, the Portuguese language and they have studied here. But if you study in Wiesbaden or if you study in Oxford, okay, and you come to Portugal and you say, I'm a lawyer to, to care about your things, he doesn't know the Portuguese laws. I think sometimes um, has to be well uh, evaluated, yeah, okay? Sure. As well, if you have a lawyer which is sitting in, uh, in Manchester or in Berlin or in uh, Paris, uh, he is not the right uh, to support you in the buying in Portugal mm -hmm. because he's not here to be on the side to control all the documents that you need. When you buy, a, uh, to, to explain a little bit the steps, how to buy a property, yeah. well, first you go to a real estate broker, but please do it on, a, on one who has an office, who has uh, a presentation, because the ones who work from home usually are not uh, really well trained in, in this area. Uh, then when you find the property, um, usually you make a reserve. This reserve should not be higher than 5,000 euros on a check which is not put on an account, but is given to the real estate agent so that he reserves property for you, okay? And you get a receipt, obviously. And you get a receipt of that, mm -hmm. yes. And you will get your money back if you don't buy, mm -hmm. okay? This is first, but to, to fix the property on you, this is a usual thing, but sometimes it's not needed. It depends of, of, the, of the situation, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is before you select the property, or this is directly when you start no. the service with the broker, uh, with the real estate agent. No, no. When you have looked around on the properties and you choose one of these okay. properties, you say, I want to buy this property. I don't want that somebody else make an offer on it. Got okay, it. okay. I reserve this property. Uh, I make it first the offer. Okay, if the offer is accepted, I reserve the property, and then I go to the lawyer to make a promissory contract. Yeah. On this promissory contract are all the rules of the deal. So everything what you want that the seller have to do before you buy it finally, 
is in this contract. This contract has um, an entry fee, an entry value, which is in Portugal usually 10%. Sometimes we ask for 20%, but it depends of the negotiation. Okay, if for example, we met in a property cost 350,000 euros mm -hmm. and you make an offer of 300,000 euros and the seller says, okay, but I want 50% entry because I have some costs to pay so that I can give you then a property free of any hypothecate or something else. Okay, so that's like the down payment slash down payment. loan in, in, in Germany. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But usually it's, only, usually it's 10%. Okay, that's not a lot. Normally it's 20 Okay. 20 is is when you really go and negotiate with that values okay okay when you go from the promissory contract go then to the to the deed mm -hmm. and on the day of the deed you bring the check with you to pay the rest of of the value or you make it by a transfer to the lawyer and the lawyer brings the check with him to give it to the other part in the moment when the check is given the registry is made in the notary where you're sitting with the notary, with the notary, and with the lawyer of the seller and with the lawyer of the the, the buyer. Okay. So the lawyers in Portugal, they are like your bodyguard for the law. So that everything is really exact like you want to have it. Mm -hmm. Size of the house and everything is usually registered, digital in the system, so there will not happen anything. But we have two registries. One is the, the, um, the property register, and the other one is the financial re register. Okay, so by the tax authority. We have okay. two documents, okay? In some countries, you have only one. Mm -hmm. But it's not a book like this in Germany, yeah? Mm -hmm. No, it's only a piece of paper with two sides written, okay, uh, who is the owner, the number of the registry, etc. If you want more detailed documents, then you go to the municipality and you get the plant and everything. But when the property is passed, you receive all that the documents, the originals for yourself. Uh, if you want, today you can uh, buy a property as well online. You don't need to be present anymore to, to, to do it. Um, there are new systems here in, in Portugal. But this is for another day yeah. explains to, to come up. So this is the process, okay? Have all, always a, a lawyer on your side. The costs in Portugal are by the transfer of the property. Uh, you pay around about six and a half percent, okay, of the property value, mm -hmm. okay, of the buying value. Okay, including everything or is that only taxes? This is only tax, mm -hmm. the transfer tax. And 0.8 of stamp tax, which is the treating of the papers, mm -hmm. okay? And then you pay the notary, which is around about 600 euros, mm -hmm. and you pay between one and one and a half percent. One and a one half percent? Usually it's one and a half. We have lawyers who make it for one percent with us. What is that? Sorry, I didn't ask you understand that. Uh, the lawyer covers... Oh, Okay. The lawyer covers one and a half percent usually. Okay. Okay. But we have as well lawyers who, who cover all the costs. Okay. Okay. Because we give them always new clients and then they they do it on that way. Okay. The transparency in the business is the most important thing. Okay. If somebody doesn't give you the information in starting, uh, it's always something not not okay. Yeah. But there's another point which people have to respect. We have the new uh, data protection law in Europe, mm -hmm. and I cannot give Google pins of the place to the clients when they ask by phone, and i never seen them before. This is not allowed in Portugal. And I think this is not allowed in other countries in Europe, Europe as well. You, you, you mean the um, direct contact details of the owner of the property? Or? No, the location. The location. The location in, in general of the property being sold because obviously you cannot. Because it, yeah. it's a private space. Yeah. It's a private space. You are invading a private space. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, uh, if you send it by Google Maps, people are in, in, invading automatically a private space. Okay? And we interpret, uh, we, we make an interpretation of the law 
some of our colleagues as well. And I think these are the right persons because they are honest working with, with, uh, with clients on both sides because our client is the, the seller because he pays us. Okay, often people forgot that. And often the, the buyer clients who come to Portugal think, okay, they can use 20 real estate agents. Okay, use them, use 20. Uh, we try to don't do that. We try to make a personal service. Yeah. Okay. If we have somebody who says, okay, I have uh, uh, only 20 minutes time to see one property because after that I will see more 20, I don't take this client because he's so occupied with other things that he will not uh, take the right decision. Right. So we can work with the client two years till he buys a property. I don't have a problem with that. But he has to be transparent with us as we are transparent with him. We will serve him the best for What are your... Um... You just mentioned that you have like a very vast portfolio of of uh, of real estate listings. Yeah. Um, how can you now, let's say, for someone who's listening or watching, um, how do they know that you are the right one? Are you serving every every kind of uh, of price uh, range? Are you serving every? Uh, are you also are you doing from lots to to uh, to skyscrapers? What is more or less like your sweet spot? Or um, if you have any, or what is like kind of your, your market niche? Okay, our main market is um, between the 450 and 850,000 euros. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have uh, 390 properties, therefore, uh, 80 are over 1 million or 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. uh, so we care about the client with a higher. Uh, value of investment as well with the client who wants an apartment of 100 or 80,000. For us, the client is the client. Uh, it, it's not his his uh, money who decides how we treat him. So we have the whole range of offer. And uh, one thing is in Portugal is well different. We have not, like in Germany, they call it the principle or the demand principle. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we have uh, no exclusivity here. Uh, only sometimes if we have an according, special according with the seller that he says, well, I don't want to have so much real estate agents. I trust you and I give you all my part to, to all my all my property to, to work on it. So um, it's different. Okay, we we have no exclusivity and therefore the property can be sometimes in the hand of five, six, seven, eight yeah. different real estate agents. So if I don't have the property that the client is looking for, ask me. Yeah. I'm your property finder. I'm not only a real estate broker. I look at you, I talk to you, I drink with you a coffee, and you explain me what you want. And after explaining me what you want, I have a better understanding what is the principal point of you, your wife, your kids, your grandfather, etc. So this comes always from the communication. It's not the emails and listings on the website who make uh, the client the client. No, it's the talking on the phone, talking on a copy. We usually practice this type of work. Like the first day, we see four properties we are, which are in the profile which the client has sent to us. Mm -hmm. And in that four properties, I detect immediately together with my colleagues or any of my colleagues is trained for that, um, the right property that the people are looking for. And we should have that, them in the portfolio. If not, we talk to a friend or to a partner company and say, well, you have the right property for my client. Let us do this together. And we do it. Mm -hmm. But the client is the main point. The client is the focus. Okay, and we can... that's that's very important to understand because um, um, it, it's um, it, it's good to know that you also get properties which are not directly in your portfolio. And, and as you said, like okay, you're a property finder, so you really um, based on the demand, based on the requirements, uh, the certain potential investor has, you will go and uh, out and find it. Perfect. Okay. We have we we have two businesses in, in our company. The one is the the holiday property or the, the property, um, the overseas property of yeah. the foreigners. 
we have the national market, which is a niche of our of our business, and then we have investment part. And in the investment part, uh, I am an economist, and I studied law in Portugal three years. I didn't finish because I have too much work in the company, so I was, was studying at night, and my kids were saying, Papa, you, you can't do that uh, anymore, so I quit. But I made three years uh, a, a law study here, but I have two engineers, one pro project manager, uh, two translators, official translators, and a, a big staff of very competent real estate brokers with uh, more than 20 years of experience in this area. So we all are like a family. We, we call us ourselves the, the Casibelia family. Mm -hmm. When the client comes, we open the arms and take him to our family and we go with him. There are people who like it. They are kind to your clients. And if clients don't like it, okay, we cannot do anything against that. They go their way, we go our way. But the basic is always if you treat your client like a friend, the friend of your client will come to you as well. Yeah. That is the base of our business. Perfect. Talking about investment, um, well, I have two engineers in my team. They have their former. Uh, evaluators by Portuguese banks, and they were as well as project managers working, as myself as well, for German companies. And uh, we um, occupy ourselves with investments in Lisbon, like I said, on the starting student residences, offices, um, office parks, uh, commercial centers, and a lot of varieties of, of investment. And we work with uh, some of the biggest Portuguese funds. If I count all properties to which we have access, there are more than 3,500 properties that we have, but not online because they are in the funds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just mentioned um, the um, banks, financial institutions. Yes. Um, if I, um, let's say, if I, and you, thank you very much, first of all, for guiding us through the, through the process. It's very, very interesting. Let's say I don't have 1% um, of, the, of the amount of the, of the investment, and obviously it makes also a lot of sense sometimes to, to leverage the, 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 um, the, the, the payment. Yeah. Um, how, how about access to local banks? Um, how do foreigners do that? Do they uh, finance the, the, uh, the real estate with domestic ban banks from where they're from? Or sometimes are there even Portuguese banks which allow um, um, the financing of the of the uh, of the real estate. This is a very good question because it's a question that um, happens a lot in the brain of a lot of foreigners because they think they are not uh, credible for Portuguese banks, but it's not that. Uh, the Portuguese banks have a specialized program. Uh, which is uh, giving foreigners uh, capital for to buy a property, they will not finance it on 100%, okay, because the foreigner is not here, okay, but the property has a certain value. So what they would finance is between 65 and 75%, depending from the earnings of the, of the client mm -hmm. and what he shows exactly to the bank that is possible to pay, okay? Uh, and the well, the Euribor is the same like everywhere. It's okay. for all Europe. Um, and the spread depends as well from the securities and from the size of the house and the, the, the credit volume. Okay. So, but it will be around about one and a half to two, two and a half percent, which is really nothing. It's cheap on, money. On, on top of Euribor. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and we have, we have banks which Again, uh, on uh, against others countries, our banks have their applications in English. They have. Uh, in, in, I, I didn't get the last part in German and in French. The applications as well. Yes, on the on the mobile phone that you can move your your account. Okay, in Portugal, as a tax uh, payer, you don't need to go anymore to tax authority because you can do everything online. Okay. okay. Another another advancement from uh, from uh, over Germany. Yes. And uh, yesterday I had a call with uh, someone from uh, from uh, Heidi from uh, Ecuador, and she also gave me some advancements over Germany concerning 
concerning administration and uh, getting a passport, which is faster faster than than, than uh, in Germany. So uh, very interesting um, to 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 see that. So it's uh, how does that work? In fact, you have a digital identity, uh, and you can swipe yes. your swipe your ID card in the in, in the or put it into the laptop or have a dongle there. Okay. You have you have a box yeah. which is certified, yeah. and you put your your uh, identity card in because there's a GSM tip, okay? And then you have a code, a uh, pin code, which is then with your mobile phone reconnected. Okay. Okay, so that you can do everything. But the simple thing is, by the tax authority, you can do everything. Password and your username. You go to the tax authority and you can make everything in your own area. That's amazing. That reminds me of my e-residency in, in Estonia. I have the same. I run a company remotely and I and I log in and 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 that's it. So um, exactly like that. It's a it's a perfect system. And that and now I also can 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 think about what you meant before with buying a property online. This might be also this process might be also uh, leveraged and, and used. Also. Therefore, you need then the chip card, your ID card, and the the connector, uh, the certification. Okay. Um, why don't you um, why don't you quickly um, talk about maybe one example which you have in your head as a listing um, to give like the listener or the watcher an idea of what is actually possible to buy maybe an let's say average in uh, in uh, in quotation marks average um, house or apartment um, so that we also get an idea of what is possible to buy. Either in, uh, in in Lisbon or in Porto or in uh, in the Algarve. Okay, then I, I will give you an example which I think is easier for to understand for the for most of the people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm not talking now about the house, but I'm talking about prices. Mm -hmm. um, the price in the Algarve um, depends from different regions. Talking now only about the Algarve, uh, the um, uh, we call it the Golden Triangle, which is uh, Quinta do Lago, Val do Lobo, and Villa Mora which is near Faro, okay? Um, there the prices uh, vary between 3,000 and 12,000 euros a square meter, mm -hmm. okay? So for the luxury in Quinta do Lago, you need a minimum of 8,000 8, euros for property, 8 to 10,000 euros for property per, per square meter. And uh, in Villa Mora, for example, you need three, three and a half thousand for an apartment. Okay. Mm -hmm. You come to Carboero, uh, which is the next high value place, then as well. Uh, there you pay for an apartment as well, a used apartment, 3,000, 3,500 euros a square meter, it can be to 4,500. But when you go online, you will see that in the Lagoa area, the medium price is 2,400 euros. And why? Because this the the website uh, the arithmetic or the um, the algorithm the algorithm of, of the website is not showing exactly where these properties are so they are in the counter of of Lagoa which has landscape very far away from from the sea you know yes. and very old small cottages and houses which are included in that price which are being sold by 500 euros a square meter that's the reason why you have then that price different, okay? But you can say for a quality property in port in uh, in um, Carvero, you need three thousand euros, three thousand five hundred euros per meter. You can have one or another cheaper, but uh, then you usually have to invest some money. Okay, okay. perfect. Well, I mean, now we have a have a good idea. Of, um, about okay. That. As I said, in Portimao, for example, you can still buy an apartment for 80,000 euros with the 40 square meters, which is 2,000 euros per meter. It's nearly the cost price of uh, of building it. Okay? Mm -hmm. but the quality should not be the uh, best. Perfect. Yes. Um, Paolo, we are we are coming to our end. Um, is there anything from 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 your side uh, which you would like to add as a um, as a final comment which we, which uh, you would like to to mention to our audience? Okay. Um, yes, I think um, there's there's one thing that I would like to share with with all the people. Um, 
often uh, foreigners or people come to Portugal quite probably think we are a third country. No, we are in Europe. Uh, we are in the same Schengen area like others are. And if people come from Berlin, from Munich, from uh, Paris, from Lyon, from London, from Oxford, from uh, Liverpool, and they come here and say, oh, it's so expensive, uh, they have to think that we pay with the same euro, not with the same pound, but with the same euro like the others as well, the same food. So the sugar costs the same, the material of construction costs the same. The only difference is the handwork is cheaper in Portugal. But the land is still expensive because of the new regulations of the European Union that you cannot build new properties anymore so close to the sea. So understand that there is more demand at the moment on the market than there is offer. So we are not anymore in the price models. We are out of this price models. But I see as well on the horizon, and uh, I was always transparent in all this, this interview and not uh, making uh, more flowers than, than the reality is. Um, I see that uh, in the next two years, um, the offer will grow up and the demand will, go, will, will slow down. So um, investment, the prices will still be the same because the tax costs and the men the, the handwork will be more expensive in the future because you need to build up the construction which is on demand. Um, but there will be more offer in, in the next year. So the prices will stabilize. They will not grow anymore. So it's not better to buy in three years than to buy in a year. It will be the same. So it will continue, okay? Because the people who come to Portugal, they stay here with the property 15, 20 years, then they sell it and the next generation comes. Yeah. It's always a cycle. Yeah. This will not end, okay? So you are secure in the investment. And another point is, do not forget, Spain and Portugal have entered the same year at the same time. We have, till 2008, we had a growing of 145%, and in Spain, 360. Okay? So if Spain has now some lower prices on apartments, it has to do because they built so much then outside of the main places, yeah, that they have more offer than they have demand. But it's still a place with a lot of concrete mm -hmm. and with less energy mm -hmm. that will not change. And yeah. here you have everything. Yeah. And you have people who talk in your language. And no, you have been in Spain as well. And a lot of others who eventually hear this interview later, they know if you talk Spanish, you need to talk in Spanish because they don't understand you in English. Most of the places. Can you repeat the last one? You have to talk in uh, Spanish? I said, if you go to, to Spain, and a lot of people which, uh, which eventually see this interview afterwards know that if you go to a restaurant in Spain or to a supermarket, yeah. if you don't speak English, they will not answer you. Okay, and here everybody talks in your home yeah. language, yeah. mother language. Yeah, it's. I mean, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for your time today. It it's, it's, it has been a great interview. Um, I learned myself a lot, even though I I know Portugal. But you talked about the great investment opportunities in Algarve. What is actually Algarve about? The beauty about Portugal. The um, great incentives concerning um, the environmental um, sustain sustainable. Um, um, power production, um, the beauty of the Algar Algarve coast, the society, the um, kind of a GDP split you even illustrated, uh, very interesting, the is very focus on the education, on the, on the very strong new generation coming up, also directly right now related to new companies settling there. A lot of dy dynamis, uh, dy dynamic um, um, movements around Portugal and as a tech hub. Then the ease, in fact, to do business in Portugal, the ease to invest, the the uh, the potential of uh, buying real estate, and also very frank um, 
frank opinions from your side, not overselling it. And this is, I think, uh, where, the, where, the, where the most value, uh, value comes because uh, it's very important to always be very, very um, neutral and also, uh, also give a clear picture. We also learned about your business, uh, finally, in here <laughs> as the last, last section of the interview, uh, and figured out, okay, uh, even if someone is not, uh, or if, if you die not on your portfolio right now, do not have like directly the listing someone is looking for, you are able to, to find everything. Um, you, you have a very strong connection uh, locally uh, with uh, lawyers, with, uh, with notaries, uh, with uh, people speaking the language, but being, being, uh, being uh, Portuguese, knowing, knowing the ups and downs. And um, yeah, in fact, um, a very nice overview of, of, uh, of Portugal, of Algarve and uh, of the entire landscape. Um, if people want to contact you, um, how can they do that? Well, they can do it uh, through the website, um, caseiberia.com. Uh, they can do it uh, through Instagram, Caseiberia Real Estate. They can do it through Facebook, Caseiberia Real Estate. Or they can contact me through LinkedIn as well on Paulo Lopez or Caseiberia. But Paulo Lopez, I write uh, as I lecture on the academy. Um, I have started it for my students on the time. Uh, I'm writing about the, the Portuguese uh, real estate industry and the tech industry. Uh, if some of the, the viewers or, or hearers would be interested, they can go to LinkedIn on Paulo Lopez Real Estate or Casiberia and they will find me there with the articles. Uh, well, email and other things I don't give uh, at the moment. It's easy to go to the website and find me. Great. And we already said that we will do an interview uh, soon in German because you also speak uh, German uh, fluently as well as, as French. So all, for all the international listeners uh, who, who might prefer another language than, than English, uh, please uh, reach out to Paulo Lopez um, on, uh, on your, in your preferred language. Thank you very much. Um, it was uh, a great interview. Uh, we, uh, Paolo, we talk soon and have a nice uh, weekend. And uh, yeah, thank you very much.